Hi everyone, I'm doing my John Maxwell and today I'm doing it on diversity and diversity of religions. So a lot of changes have taken place in our world. Many people know that now we have a Hindu leader in England and we have a Muslim leader running in Scotland. So I think it's good. Um, I grew up with people of different backgrounds and different religions and we all respected each other's cultures. We all got along. We were all respectful of each other and helped each other and in Zimbabwe. And we had political leaders in our community who were Hindus, who were Muslims, um, whether it was in Zimbabwe or South Africa, we have people that led our communities and our own parents and grandparents were very influential in our countries. They fought for education for girls, for not just girls and women, but for education for us as Indians and Goans, and they helped everybody. So you get good and bad people in every culture. We had Muslims that did us down. We had Hindus that did us down. And I'm sure there were people who felt that we did them down, knowingly or un unknowingly. And it's part of life. I'm happy to see that there are Muslim leaders coming up and Hindu leaders coming up. And we should love and let love and respect each other's religions and cultures. Coming to Canada was a culture shock, especially in the banking community. I was shocked when most of the leaders at the top were white and I didn't see a lot of black leaders. I didn't see a lot of uh, people of color in management. Coming from England, it was a huge culture shock for me. But I got used to it, and now we have Bar Barrett Masrani at TD. But you don't see a lot of people, especially Indian women, in management positions, in leadership positions. And personally, I think that this is a good thing that's happening. I think that the whites are now going to have to learn to respect other people's cultures. They always giving the orders and telling people what to do, but now they're going to take the orders and they're going to have to adjust to it. And it's a very different experience when you go from being like I was running offices, dealing with CEOs, leading organizations, managing administration, coordinating projects to go into a call center job where you're being abused, you're being shouted at for things that are not your fault, things that have gone wrong, but people are screaming at you, yelling at you, saying this is insane, this is insanity, this is stupid, and it's not your fault. So it's very hard if you're sensitive, and if you have a sensitive heart and you're a sensitive person, it's very hard to deal with that kind of environment. But I've learned to adjust, and so I was hired I went to a walk-in facility where I left my resume and they said, if you want a job and you're willing to learn, you can come. So it's not ideal. 99% of us who work there are Indian and we help each other. And I used to get very upset. It's a Muslim leader, manager, operations manager that helped me to adjust. That told me how to deal with them when they're screaming at me and yelling at me or they're being abusive. And abuse can take a lot of forms. It can be the way they speak to you, like they're coming on to you, flirting with you. It can be being unprofessional. It can be screaming at you. It can be using swear words. It can be a lot of things. And we didn't grow up like that, screaming at people and yelling at people and taking our frustrations out on them. So this was a huge adjustment for me, this job, but I have adjusted. Most people stay a year or two in the call center and they move on. But I have not had any other opportunities. With my masters in education, my masters in theology, I apply to all the Christian nonprofits. I apply to the church. I apply to the Jesuits. They hire the Hindus and the Muslims before they hire me. So they're sending me a message. Maybe those are the values they want in the church. Maybe that's what they like. And I decided, you know what, just take down your profile as a spiritual director. No matter how many organizations I contacted, no matter how much evidence I provided that I have had 
the experience that I've done practicums that I've been supervised they have never given me the opportunity to lead a retreat in Canada or to help in a retreat center or to help as a spiritual director in a parish or to help in the hospitals as a spiritual director they've never given me that opportunity so the last opportunity I had was two years ago and it was with the Jesuits in Scotland they had put out a tweet that they were looking for people to run the retreats over Lent and I was willing to help so I did that but I just feel that they don't want me in the church they don't want me to use my skills they don't want me to use my education so I might as well forget it and just move on and do something else whatever it is maybe a Muslim organization will hire me and maybe they'll pay me what I'm worth and maybe I'll get to travel with them and do the things that I want to do with them you never know it was the same thing with the one campaign I volunteered for many many years with them hoping that I would get a break but some of their jobs the it's like the job of three people that they want you to do and you get paid very little so I was like I'm not doing that but there are opportunities out there I even applied to Zimbabwe I applied to UNICEF they're looking for people to run their offices and if I get an opportunity I'll go why not it's not like I don't have experience even when I worked in Bulawayo I worked for a travel agency when I stayed with the De Silva's and they were Muslim people that ran their travel agency and when I went to university in South Africa there were Muslim people that met me at the airport they took me they dropped me off at Sunnyside residence and they left me there and then I sorted myself out I found out my classes I found out what I needed to do I registered for my meals I took things and I just ran with them I had nobody there in South Africa to help me and I'm used to it that's how I function I do things I make my plans decide where I'm going and I do it so it's a good experience I think this is going to be good for especially the whites they have to learn how to work with everyone how to get along with everyone and for Canada uh, the changes are very very slow to come but they are coming and they are happening and even my Hindu friends I have Hindu friends in Britain that are in management positions and I did help them I share my experience with them I guide them they guide me and they're doing well and they're women I'm happy for them so that's how it goes and like I said if I get an executive assistant position in England I would love to go back I would go back tomorrow because it's not like I haven't tried here I've applied I've tried I keep applying and nothing has opened up for me so I'm excited about seeing all these changes that are happening and we had mosques in Kwekwe we had Hindu temples we grew up with these things it's not something strange to us and I think it's good the only difference for us when it comes to Christianity is what Jesus did and our belief in Jesus and believing that he's the way the truth and the life the Old Testament is all the same but it's the New Testament and it's what Jesus did in the New Testament how he showed mercy what he did he was a healer he was a teacher he was somebody that people came to when he was out people came to him and asked for his guidance his advice and he was descended from kings and queens and he was respected so was his mother so were the people in the community the Romans did respect them even though they were under their laws they had a lot of respect for them and if you read the crucifixion before it happened you can read and compare the three Gospels and see some of when they show Jesus answered how he answered his authority and you can see the scriptures where it said he didn't answer and compare them and see so I think it's good there were lots of women leaders in the Jewish communities that went with Jesus that accompanied him that took care of him and I was hoping that I would get a role like that where I could work with some of the Jesuits where I could accompany them I could travel with them 
there are priests I met in Zimbabwe who told me there are positions like that. You have to keep applying. I said to them, I do apply and I do ask and I don't get any positive things from the church, nothing. And they said, but why are you so highly qualified? You've got your master's and we can see that you're good. Why don't they take you? I said, oh, I don't know. That's how it is in Canada. And then I wanted to go back to England to the Jesuits in Britain. There also, nothing opened up. Scotland, nothing opened up. Zimbabwe, nothing opened up. Canada, nothing opened up. So obviously the church doesn't need me. So I'll leave it at that. I'm glad I did my courses. I've learned a lot. I've helped a lot of people. I've helped people get their children into schools, Blessed Sacrament School. I've introduced people to my parish priest. I've helped people to become Catholic. I've helped people to get references when they were getting married or they needed some kind of reference. So I've done a lot for people. Unfortunately, people don't think I'm worthy to receive help. So I'll just carry on, put my faith in God, put my faith in Our Lady. And if you look at this whole banking crisis, I'm very proud of my university and what they've done because they've exposed all the rot in the banking culture. I'm proud of them. It's good. And I hope they carry on. I hope Adam Habib continues to be part of WITS and help WITS and continues to develop leaders and people of faith because that's the way forward. So it's good to be diverse. It's good to have people with different backgrounds, different experiences, but live and let live. Just because your culture supports having harems or having two, three wives, don't expect everyone to be like that. And with ours, we leave people. They want to carry on and do what they want, we leave them. As long as they leave us alone, we leave them alone. That's how I grew up in Zimbabwe.